Okay, so I have been looking for a way to do head tracking in my simulator. Um, three screens in a simulator like this is usually great if you're driving cars and you have a front windshield and two windows on the side to look out of. It's fantastic. But when you're trying to fly a plane, especially in like DCS where you like have to look around behind you, it's not so great because then I'm just looking up at the ceiling like some kind Stargazer. of... Stargazer. Initially, when I was looking for this, I was trying to find something so I could use these VR cameras on my simulator that goes with this um, without having to wear a headset because sometimes you don't always want something on your head uh, that's big and bulky and awkward. Sorry to um, And you also don't want to look like Tony Stark, like this guy over here. So anyway, I was looking for a software to help me do head tracking uh, without that. There are traditional means of head tracking, things like Track IR, which has its pros and cons, and we'll get to that in a second. It allows you to use a standard webcam to do head tracking, which it's free and open source, which is great if you already have a webcam, which I do. And secondly, you're okay with risking using open source, which also, yes. So why would you use a free software instead of uh, getting something like a track IR. Well, first off, the most obvious is probably price, where a track IR costs about $150 for the new one, uh, and a webcam is probably sitting on your desk already, and if not, there you can get them for as low as like $20. In order for track IR to work, you have to have a transmitter and a receiver, and the transmitter you have to wear on your head, and the receiver you have to figure out a place to mount on your computer. Um, it works kind of like your grandma's Wii remote in her nursing home. Where you have a little LED blaster and an LED receiver, and then depending on where that goes, the computer can tell where it's pointing. To power the IR blaster that goes on your head with the little LEDs on it, you have to have a cable running at your head. And then you also have to run a cable to somewhere over by your monitors and get everything set up. Which isn't bad if you always want to wear a headset, but I don't. That's why um, I wasn't a fan when I couldn't find a solution for this. You can use this software to use this and the IR cameras on there, but then you have to wear it on your forehead like this. And that seems kind of goofy. So I'm not saying that Track IR is a bad solution at all, but it is a much more expensive solution. And I am a proponent of trying stuff like this that costs next to nothing before I go and try something that costs a whole lot of money and then being upset with it. One of the big benefits of a Track IR is that it is a finished product. Uh, I think they're on their fifth iteration now. So it's pretty polished and it works really, really well. I know people that use it and they really like it, but I don't know that I want to drop that kind of money on it, especially for something I use occasionally. Since I sp spent no money on this, this is my 100% money back guarantee. I'm gonna link, I'm gonna put the link of the software in the description. Okay, so from everything I read online, you want to use uh, OpenTrack. They have the version on GitHub, uh, like I said, which will be linked below. Um, so the input here, you wanna use the neural net tracker. Uh, output, you wanna use FreeTrack 2.0 Enhanced, and they said that you, to use the Excella filter if you're using a webcam. Uh, inside the options, in the tracker, you wanna pick your camera across the top. I'm using the Logitech C920 Pro. Um, it's just an old 1080p webcam. You could probably get them for super cheap now. And then you um, you want to put in the FOV of your camera. So you're going to have to look up the spec online. And then also you're going to have to look up a resolution of your camera. I think the lower the resolution, the um, faster or less processing power that it's going to take. And then you're also going to want, want to match the number of frames per second that your camera will put out. So once you do that, you have this open track thing set up and then you can hit start tracking. And then the camera will acquire your face as shown here. And as you move around, it will move the way that the little octopus on open track is looking. So you'll know that it works. So let's get into DCS and give this thing a shot, which you're sitting right where my throttles are. So or where my, I normally put my throttle. So if I'm reaching around or leaning forward, it's cause I'm trying to reach my flight controls. All right, so that's actually working pretty well here. And you can look 
all the way through your canopy. Um, let's see, is this thing started up? Man, it's so nice to be able to look over at those switches and click on them rather than the normal way of trying to use the numpad. And we will pretend like we have permission from tower to take off. Um, full disclosure, I did try this a little bit ago, but my FOV and my camera settings weren't right, and it was super glitchy. But anyway, as you can tell, you can look and see pretty much everything, which is fantastic when you're trying to look in the sky for another airplane. All right, let's try an air-to-air -air mission really quick. This one we have a bomber out in the air, and we want to be able to take it out before it reaches the carrier. Take off. Put our wheels up. All right, we got him. We're gonna go there, and then we're going to go to 40 mile range. We'll see if this guy contributes to his own destruction by flying straight and level toward me, which is perfect. And then we'll see if we can take a max range shot on him. Nope. There he is throwing out some flares. Nope, 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 nope. For some reason, it's not letting me select my weapons. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. I think I'm having issues with DCS. Let's try this. Well, I guess it, I don't have to try it again. Um, but it's not letting me select any of the guns. This is perfect. All right, let's try a different mission. I haven't had an issue with weapons on this one. We'll see what happens. Well, right now, I guess. See if I can track some of these airplanes with my head. There you go. See, now I'm getting symbology changes. That wasn't happening before. Alright, let's go protect the carrier. And I can see all the way behind me. Oh, and there's a guy up there, or a missile. Which I couldn't have done otherwise. We'll stay fast and full afterburner because... Well, reasons. There he is. That's an F-14. I have one AMRAM left. Looks like somebody already shot at him. damaged him. Yeah, he's going down for sure. Alright, let's not crash into the water. So nice to be able to look around. So this seems to be working pretty well. Um, I don't have any major complaints about it, uh, except for when I... Um, lose my mouse and have to look this way to look down at my mouse and the screen moves all over the place but that's going to happen with any tracking system so uh for being an extremely free option uh i think it's pretty good keeps a little more money in my wallet which you know i have to do if you watched my uh rudder pedals video if you haven't uh you can go ahead and click that video um maybe over here on the side or the other side i don't know I don't know where YouTube puts it. I'm not that good yet. Um, anyway, I will see you guys next time.
Thanks for watching and hanging out in the garage.